They were judging the competition. We got a special guest that's gonna give y'all a treat too. Then we're gonna announce the winner. Who's ready to hear the winner? Who's ready to hear the next two comedians? Come on now. Come on now, audience. Y'all aren't done yet now. Y'all can check out after these next two come in. Y'all can, you know, take an alcohol break or something, you know. But anyway, this next guy coming to the stage is a very funny guy. He has his son recording him, and he has his daughter-in-law in attendance too. Start clapping, guys, for the hilarious Dan Glazer. Thank you, Logan. You know, Evan, um, he said to me, he goes, Dan, you know, I want to. I see your sets a lot. I want to give you a little advice. You talk too quickly between jokes. You don't give people time to listen and laugh. So what I want you to do is take a glass of water up here, and every time you joke and hear a laugh, I want you to take a drink to slow down. But don't take a drink until you hear a laugh. I said, hey, Evan, if I'm going to wait to hear a laugh, I'm going to end up dying of thirst. <laughs> <laughs> hey, did you hear in the news, now, this is a true story in the news about the mother who drove to Checkers restaurant to get hamburgers and fries for her children? When she got through the, rep, the bag of hamburgers and fries, she looked at, opened it up, looked at the bottom, there were five little tiny bags of marijuana. I don't know about you, but that was one awesome happy meal. <laughs> Then did you hear about uh, when Hillary Clinton was running for uh, president, came out, she gets $200,000 for speaking engagement. $200,000. Can you imagine what she charges Bill for sex? <laughs> then I remember a few years ago when Mitt Romney was running for president, came out, he was Mormon. I didn't know anything about Mormons, so I researched her. You know, Mormon men can have several wives, some can have up to five. I'm Jewish, I couldn't imagine having five Jewish wives. If I had five Jewish wives, it means I have five Jewish wives and say, not tonight, I got a headache. <laughs> if I have five Jewish wives, it means I have five Jewish wives, the only thing they make for dinner is reservations. <laughs> now what's that old joke, why did the Jewish guy die before his five Jewish wives? Because he wanted to. <laughs> um, th is it a bad sign that my wife posted my picture on Match.com? I have a cousin who, 57, recently divorced, she joined MASH.com. The true story, the first picture she gets is of a guy totally naked with his ding-dong sticking straight out. She called me up, she goes, Dan, I can't believe this guy sent me a picture of himself totally naked with his ding-dong sticking straight out. I said, well, at least he got right to the point. By the way, guy, you date a guy like that, your dating guy can hold two cups of coffee and possibly four donuts at the same time. <laughs> But the biggest problem with my wife and I's marriage is snoring. When I snore, it just wakes her up. But when she snores, it wakes both of us up. So the other night, she, we were sleeping together, she starts snoring, and I, I mean incessantly, and I inadvertently grabbed her booby, and she stopped snoring. And I said to myself, I gotta pack this. So the next day, I'm sitting at Starbucks next to one of the more comfortable chairs, and a lady is sitting next to me reading her iPad, and she fell asleep and starts snoring. And I looked at her booby and I said to myself, do I squeeze it or do I not? So I squeezed it. It didn't go well. It's not what you think. She's stalking me now. She's 85 years old. She wants me to squeeze the other boob enough. <laughs> Last night, you know, I fooled around with the wife and this morning she woke up and she said, Dan, I just want you to know, last night I was not faking it. I said, really? She goes, no, I really did fall asleep. <laughs> So my mom lives in an assisted living down the street here, and she's never seen me do stand-up, so I took her to a club, comedy club, and she watched me do the stand-up. After the stand-up, I went up to her, I said, hey mom, how'd you like my jokes? She said, it's not too late to get a medical degree. <laughs> so every morning I write a new joke, and I take it over to the assistant living to read it to her, to cheer her up, cheer her up. So I read her a joke this morning. After I told her the joke, she said, Dan, I really wish you had grown up to be a monk. I said, why is that? She goes, they take a vow of silence. <laughs> so anyway, so. I've been doing this comedy thing about five years, and as you can see, it's not going well. <laughs> I bombed so much, the FBI put me on a terrorist watch list. <laughs> I bombed so much, the US Air Force left a message on my answer machine. Hey, we'd like to recruit you. We hear you're good at bombing. <laughs> But I'm getting a little more popular. I got called to perform at a parachutist convention the other day. They said, the only thing is, you'll have to tell your jokes while you're parachuting, but don't worry, there's no strings attached. <laughs> and I just recently went on a new diet, and I actually go downtown land, I stand on a street corner with a sign that says, I told jokes for food. I've lost 50 pounds. <laughs> 
So I went to perform at a club last night. After the performance, the manager, came, club manager came up to me and said, Dan, do you do comedy because you love it or for the money? I said, I do it because I love it. He said, good, because tonight I'm not going to pay you any money. I said, is it too late to change my answer? <laughs> he said, you know, Dan, after seeing your set, I realized your comedy has reached the next level. I said, what's that? He goes, retirement. <laughs> he said, he said, you know, I said, you know, I've been thinking about giving up quitting comedy anyway. He goes, how can you quit something you've never started? He said, in fact, Dan, I really think there is a place in the comedy world for you, in stand-up comedy. I said, where's that? He goes, sitting in the audience. And what is it with these hookah shops all over Atlanta? Have you seen the hookah shops all over Atlanta? I never heard of a hookah before, but I understand it's like a Turkish pipe that kids sit around smoking. So I went to a restaurant the other day and the waitress said, would you like a hookah? I said, no, I picked my hookahs up in downtown Atlanta on Peachtree Street. Hey, you've been a great crowd. Thank you, thank you. Guys, give it up for Dan Blazer. <laughs>